How's it going, Pablo? Uh, congrats on the win. Um, my main question is a little more big picture. Um, it seems like you guys have really flipped the script from kind of an underdog team to a team that now is on top of the pack and kind of seen as maybe the one to be hunted. Um, what, what has it taken to reach kind of that killer mindset, and how do you guys maintain that? Again, uh, I think for me, it's, it's all about the process. And what validates the process is getting results. And so, you know, there, there was a couple moments um, about a month and a half ago where um, guys wanted to change some of the things that we were doing from a, a physical load perspective. Um, and, and my challenge to them was, we can do that. But that's what we've done in the past. And in order to be better than we've been is we got to do things differently. And at the end of the conversation, uh, the guys agreed that uh, it's a lot of work, it's hard. Um, but that's where success lies, is in the hard. It's not in the easy. Um, and I think that's what, you know, this group is, is, has been growing, is, is, is a hard mindset. Um, and, and going through that and training every day. Um, and then obviously learning from each game. I think every game uh, presents different challenges, sometimes coming from behind, sometimes holding a lead. Um, and, you know, what really excited me about this game um, was in the 85th minute uh, that, you know, they had the ball in our defensive in, in, in our defensive third, and we pressed out of that shape. And that's something that, again, that we went over against LA, where we're conceived a lot of space, and we're, we don't, whether, you know, don't know why it was, um, but just saw a change in mentality in the 85th minute of this game. A again, um, all the credit goes to the guys that, that are really playing some great stuff. Um, and more importantly, just the, the cohesiveness, the camaraderie within the group. Um, you know, it's, it's a real pleasure uh, to work with these guys and, and to be a part of the group. And um, again, I think for us, um, the biggest challenge isn't our opponents. It's us to be better than we were the game before. And, and that's, that's what we talk about internally. And, uh, you know, the guys are doing a great job of that. And then kind of on a similar note, it seems like you guys have really um, made home field advantage a, a thing again, kind of made this a fortress. Uh, what do you think has gone into that? And, and how much has that maybe helped you guys um, going into in this, in this season? Yeah, again, I think the game of football is about taking your chances. Um, and, and I think we left a few on the table tonight. I think we created some, some really good opportunities. But, you know, when the guys are finishing, um, it puts you in a position to where, because, again, I don't think home field is, is an advantage when the game is when the game starts. There's got to be a there's got to be a mechanism in which opposing teams start to feel like this this place is overwhelming and usually has to do with the scoreline. So scoring first, playing solid defensively, um, will continue to put us in a position to make this make AFF a fortress. Pablo, great win. You coming off you're coming off a couple of um, disappointing results perhaps in the draw in LA and the loss in New Mexico. What's your approach in overcoming and avoiding maybe uh, focusing on the negative? Be, um, do you focus on the games and the things that happen in those games or is it water off a duck's back and you just look forward? Because yeah. whatever you did worked out well. Yeah, no, I think, I think every situation is different. I, I think going from the New Mexico game to the LA game, given that there were so many changes to the, to the, to the group, um, it made no sense to harp on that game. Um, but then going, you know, the LA game, um, it, was, it was an important game um, because again, I think one of the things that we've established with the group is chemistry. And, and so the expectations of what the LA game should look like from our perspective. Again, always focusing on us. Uh, and, and, um, and so obviously after the game, it's, and, and obviously, before the game, if you draw on the road, you'd say that's a decent point. But the way it manifested itself and them scoring on the last play of the game, I've never seen a, a group so upset and so ready to get back on it and, 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 and prove to themselves that we can close, we can finish games the right way. And so, um, again, the, the, I think the, the best thing for a coach is when you have players that feel worse than the coach uh, after after performances that don't go our way. Um, and, and we have a locker room of, of quite a few guys that, that made sure um, that everyone understood that the way we closed out LA wasn't good enough. And so, you know, again, we, 
we go as the leaders go. And, um, and, and tonight, you know, everyone had a really good performance, and it looked like um, the words that were spoken in the locker room after the LA game resonated with the group. Lots of superlatives to go around tonight for a lot of players, Gomez, Luna. But looks like Crooks is starting to come into the team. Is that him coming to them, or is the team coming to the way Matt plays? Yeah, I think that's, again, I think everything takes time to really gel and, and get a really good understanding. You know, I think Crooks has a really good relationship playing in that right half space with, with Andres, right? And, and I think that's taken time to develop, understanding the movements of your particular players. Last year, Andres had a really hard time running in behind defenses. He always wanted to feet to then engage in a one v one. Now that this, you know, that, that that they've they've found a connection, Andres is getting in behind and, and Crooks is, is feeding them. And so, I, I think it's um, it's a little bit of both. And and again, I think this league is very difficult, even at you know, at, with with Crooks' experience to adjust to. It's a fast league. It's a transition league. It's a physical league, um, and and culturally as well. I mean, we have. Half our team are, 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 are Latinos, and so it takes time when, when at times you can't speak the same language to have a really good understanding of what my teammate likes, what he doesn't like, um, and it's just great to see Crooksy just um, come into his own, um, and, and he's playing extremely well. Thank you. DJ? Pablo, uh, your years playing and your years coaching, how many center backs have you played with or coached who – like Brian Vera, think it's a good idea to go on a 60-yard run and beat multiple lines and shred everybody. You know, back in the day, uh, DJ, that was that was that was kind of like the uh, the wild card uh, when you had a player that was capable of breaking lines with the dribble. Um, Any more in the modern game, you're you're thinking about your your structure um, to attract pressure to then find a pivot who's unmarked. Um, but but again, I think those type of moments. Um, and again, that's why I always say it's a, it's a player's game. I think some of our movements today um, weren't prescribed, um, but it's a feel thing. And, and after the game, uh, again, I always ask the guys, um, you know, what, why, why did we win this game? What was it about this game that, that made it click? And, and Luna brought up, you know, the fact that he felt free. He felt like, you know, the combinations that, that, that they were creating was just brought joy to him. Um, and I think in this case with Vera, it's, it's the same type of thing. Um, you know, you've got to make plays. Um, and, and obviously, we don't coach 60-yard scampers. But what it does do is it puts a question mark in, in, now in the defensive uh, in, into our opponents as to whether or who's going to track this guy. Um, so it's just a little wrinkle, um, but it's, it's, it's great. You had to play Phillip out of position tonight at right back. And they clearly wanted to go at him and did go at him multiple times. What did you think of his performance uh, defensively? Yeah, I think in the first half, um, you know, he was being isolated, obviously. And I think for the most part, he did a pretty good job. In the second half, made an adjustment where uh, the, the pivot on the right side, which is going to be Ojeda more times than not, um, was doubling down. And Andres has worked to double down if, if Andres is there or, or Ojeda. And I think we did a really good job in the second half of nullifying some, some, some opportunities. And then Jay Glad sweeping it up as well. So again, a really collective effort. And again, it's, it's football. They're going to try to find uh, where you're vulnerable. Um, but uh, again, for Philip playing out of position against speedy players, Paintsville last week, and, and now this gentleman this week, um, you know, I, thought, I thought he's good, done a really good job for us. Given that Colorado uh, came in here and is the one team that's won, in your six games here, and given the fact that they've stayed, you know, within shouting distance here in the West early on, what do they have this year? What do you have to prepare for Saturday night? Yeah, well, again, they revamped that whole group and and brought in a lot of guys from Europe, um, and, and and again, a goalkeeper. Um, they got you know a center back in, in in Bombito who's you know playing extremely well as a young center back, and um, Mihailovic in the middle midfield. Um, you know, and they, and and uh, uh, forget what his name is. Uh, their striker has been putting balls in the back of the net, and so again, I think when you when you change things, it can go either way. They've they've really hit some str a, a different stride this year. They're 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 a very dynamic team. They like to get after the ball, um, and they're very direct in, in the way they play. And so for us, you know, I go back to that game that we played here, and it was a game that I felt like we were in control. Um, but it, you know, we let a couple moments really derail us mentally, and kind of lost our our, our mojo. Um, and then just looking back at that game, it was it was the game that 
um, that we had a lot of reflection on as a group. And so from that game, I think we've come a long way. And now the onus is on us to, you know, put forth a performance that's worthy of the three points. Anyone else? Uh, Pablo, ese fue el primer partido desde hace semanas donde Chicho no metió gol ni asistencia. Uh, ¿qué, qué, ¿Qué viste de los otros jugadores que subieron su juego en, es, en ese partido para ayudar con los goles y asistencias? Sí, oh. yo creo que es normal cuando, cuando un jugador como Chicho siempre marca y, y da asistencia que va a, los equipos van a marcar, lo, van a poner dos, tres y van a abrir los espacios para va a abrir el espacio para para otros compañeros y Andrés y, y Luna aprovecharon los espacios que, que habían porque le estaban marcando a Chicho con, con dos hombres o sea ese es el fútbol uh, pero contribuyó de, de otra manera de, de la mentalidad eh, de, 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 de el, el, la, la pasión que tiene a jugar, a, a defender, a marcar. Hizo dos o tres jugadas en, en nuestro uh, tercio defensivo que fueron espectacular. Y, y no hay otro nueve que se va a, que hace ese tipo de acciones para el equipo. Y, y como le expliqué después del partido, que si, si perdemos a Chicho, por, perdemos nuestro corazón del grupo. So the question was, this is the first game in a few weeks that Chicho hasn't notched a goal or an assist. Like, what do you think contributed to that? Paulo said that when you have a nine of uh, Chicho's quality, he opens up space for the rest of his teammates just because the other guys, the other team put two or three players on him. And that uh, Andres and Luna kind of took advantage of that space. Um, but that Chicho contributed to this game in other ways with this passion and the heart that he has for the team. And that how he said earlier tonight, if they were to lose Chicho, they lose a big part, a big heart of the team. Y Brian Ojeda, uh, uh, para mí, fue uno de los mejores jugadores en la noche. Uh, ¿Qué puedes comentar de su uh, partido hoy y lo importante que eres para el equipo? Mira, yo creo que, eh, como, como siempre digo, que, que la, el desarrollo de un, de un jugador toma tiempo. Uno nunca sabe cuándo ya estará el nivel. Eh, pero yo creo que el, el Brian sigue sobrepasando las expectativas que tenemos para él y también con el Meca. Y yo creo que esos dos jugando juntos ya se entienden sin mirar. Sin mirar. O sea, et, et son el completo en la forma que queremos defender cuando tenemos el balón. Y yo creo que también las cosas que Brian hace que, que es fundamental para nuestro grupo eh, sale presio, presionando del medio campo. A, a veces cuando el, el Crooks y el Chicho están en el otro lado de la cancha, él sale con velocidad, con ganas para mover las líneas para adelante. Y para mí, eh, como le dije cuando salió del partido, que es el mejor partido que lo ha visto jugar. So the question was that for him, Brian Ojeda was one of the best players on the pitch tonight. What does he have to comment? I'm um, saying that Ojeda overcomes a lot of the hurdles that they put for him and along with Omeka this year that they really understand each other. And it's a complete package for the team that they're looking for defensively and offensively. And that Brian really comes out of midfield to pressure if Crooks and Chicho are on the opposite side, that he comes out with speed and desire to win the ball. That really makes a difference for him. Y última para mí, uh, Gavin Beavers uh, está jugando un poco más de lo que hemos visto en el pasado. Uh, y tuvo unas buenas tapadas hoy noche, pero tampoco no estaba muy ocupado. Uh, ¿Qué están haciendo para escoger los partidos en que él juega en lugar de Zach McMath? Sí, no, no, eh, nos sentamos antes del año y queremos eh, darle más partido este año que le dimos el año pasado. Porque el, el desarrollo de, de un arquero es diferente que un jugador que juega en la cancha, porque no, no lo podemos cambiar en el minuto 60, 70. Así estamos, eh, la estrategia que estamos usando es eh, eh, siempre los partidos que jugamos eh, los miércoles hacen dos cosas. Uno, le da un poco de descanso a, a Zach para estar fresco para el partido al, al, al fin de semana. Pero el otro es siguiendo, sumando partido para el, el, el Gavin Beavers, porque para mí es el, es el, es el eh, creo, del, del futuro del club. Y lo queremos traer de una manera donde no le ponemos tanto presión cada, con cada partido, pero que sí está listo. Y, y hoy día yo creo que jugó, las tajadas que, que hizo fueron clave en ese momento 
y, y manejó bien la línea de atrás. Y yo creo que con cada partido va mejorando, gan ganando confianza y ayudando al equipo a ganar. We've seen uh, Gavin Beavers get more minutes in games this season than we did prior seasons. Like, what goes into that decision and pretty much giving him those games? And Pablo says that the development of the goalkeepers is a little bit different than field players, just so you can't sub goalkeepers in in the 60th minute. Uh, but that Gavin is, is the future of this club, goalkeeping-wise, so that they need to keep him ready. So every Wednesday game, it gives a chance for Gavin to get experience in minutes, but also to give some rest to Zach McMath. Bueno, Pablo, nada más quería hacerte una pregunta con respecto a la posición de la tabla del equipo. Quizás es algo que no te preocupa mucho a ti. A muchos fanáticos les, les importa, pero con la, el empate de Minnesota y Galaxy del día de hoy, Vancouver perdiendo también ante Colorado, se afianza un poco más Real Salt Lake. No con mucha diferencia, pero sí en el primer puesto de la conferencia. Tanto para ti como para el equipo, ¿qué tan importante es estar en una buena posición en la tabla, tomando en cuenta que el año pasado por el tema del playoff tuvimos que jugar dos partidos en Houston. Claro, yo creo que la, la meta de, de, de nuestro equipo es, es terminar en los primeros cuatro, cuatro espacios para, para mantener un, un, un partido de playoffs en, aquí en casa. Y, excuse me. y ahora que nos encontramos a, arriba de la tabla, es otra mentalidad que es necesario para, meter ese, eh, para me, mantener el, el nivel. Y en los años pasados siempre venimos por atrás um, y ahora estamos, sabemos que todos los partidos vamos a recibir el mejor esfuerzo de, de nuestros rivales. Y yo creo que si queremos ser un gran equipo, tenemos que saber cómo manejar eh, lo, los partidos diferentes, eh, el esfuerzo diferente y la mentalidad diferente. Y para mí los chicos están haciendo un, un trabajo excelente y, y queremos seguir de esta manera. So the question was just in regards to the standing on the table, how important is that to you and the team? Paulo just says that this year they're really just focusing on maintaining a top four spot so they can get a home playoff game. That in past years they've kind of been chasing, you know, getting in last day, decision day to make playoffs. But to just keep that mentality and effort throughout the whole season against the rivals. Okay. Anyone on Zoom? Pablo, felicidades por lo que se está logrando al momento. Eh, solamente dos cositas. Uh, Philip Kinton, te, ¿te sientes satisfecho con él porque está rindiendo como un jugador de primera? Y número dos sería el partido del sábado, ¿cómo vas a enfrentarlo? Porque siempre eh, los partidos contra el Colorado han sido partidos favorables al Real Salt Lake, pero la última vez nos sorprendieron. ¿Cómo ves ese partido? Sí, uh, primero yo creo que el Philip est está jugando bastante bien. Eh, Hoy día jugó uh, como lateral derecho eh, porque tenemos algunas lesiones y cosas que, que pasó, pero le hablé y me dijo que se sentía cómodo y en los últimos partidos ha jugado contra jugadores muy rápido y creo que eh, está ganando mucha confianza en cualquier posición que juega, pero lo más, lo más lindo para mí es, es, un, es un jugador bien humilde eh, que quiere seguir mejorando y yo creo que como, como, como todos los, los, los jugadores jóvenes que es un jugador que va creciendo la experiencia y va a ser un jugador de, del futuro para nuestro grupo. Y para el partido de Colorado, eh, como dije, yo creo que eh, iniciamos con, eh, jugamos con mucho control en el primer tiempo, pero en el segundo tiempo no... no eh, el partido se puso un poco difícil. Y ahora eh, ya aprendimos de, de ese partido que hay que jugar 90 minutos disciplinado, uh, con, 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 con muchas ganas y una mentalidad eh, necesaria para ganar los partidos. Así este va a ser un partido difícil, aunque estamos jugando en casa, andan muy bien en la tabla. Uh, y como todos los partidos, tenemos que salir a jugando nuestro estilo, eh, con nuestra mentalidad. Para, para sacar los tres puntos. So the first question was just, what do you think about Philip Quinton's performance the last few games? And the second one was, how do you feel about the upcoming game versus Colorado since last time? Usually uh, results versus Colorado kind of going towards us, but last game they kind of shocked us at home and we lost. Uh, to answer the first question, um, Pablo says that Philip is just a really nice, humble player who's always willing to learn. Um, that he spoke to him about playing right back like he did today and that Philip said he felt comfortable, um, but that he stepped up just because due of injuries. 
um, but that he did a good job. And as for the second question, um, the last game that we played Colorado at home, that they controlled the first half, but they kind of lost their heads in the second half, so that they need to just play 90 minutes of disciplined soccer um, to kind of maintain that focus and mentality to be able to win next Saturday. All right, last question on Zoom from Justin for Pablo. Thank you so much. Uh, hi, Pablo. Thank you for your time. Um, just want to get your thoughts on Diego Luna's performance tonight. Obviously, uh, still on the team for a couple games there, now back in uh, big performance tonight. Yeah, no, I think, again, I think it's a season um, is always has its ebbs and flows uh, for individuals as well as the collective. And you know, I think Diego got off to a, a, a rough start um, for a multitude of reasons. And, you know, I think pulling him out of the group, um, you know, he came into the Chicago game and, and made a huge difference. And then, uh, you know, he, then he was injured for, for a game. And then he came in and started against New Mexico, played extremely well, scored a goal. I think last weekend against L.A., he was phenomenal. And tonight... I think he followed that up with with one with, with his best performance of the season, and so um, I think Diego's in a great run of form on both sides of the ball. Just super committed, um, and and really led by his actions tonight uh, on both sides of the ball. I thought he was tremendous, and um, in order for us to be, uh, you know, a very good team, uh, Diego's got to put in those type of performances uh, that he has in the last few games he's played. So just super happy for his development, his growth. As a, as, a, as a you know fantastic young player with a great mindset and his ability to contribute on both sides of the ball. Thanks, Pablo. Thanks. Thank Thanks, everyone.